Hello Jack, hello everyone. Stranger Things 2 dropped on Netflix the other week and I was very much looking forward to it. But was it as good as the first season? Set about a year after the events of the first season, life is starting to get back to normal. The kids are moving on from D&D &D and moving on to computer games and going to their local arcade. But at the same time, Will is having troubling visions of the Upside Down, foreshadowing some further trouble on the horizon. The second season feels a bit slow going at first, as were the first few episodes were introduced to, to where the characters are now and how they're progressing. Um, so it does feel a bit slow going for the first few episodes. Um, but I think that's also partly down to my expectations for it because, you know, we want to see uh, Eleven and Mike reunited. We want to see more of what's going on with the Upside Down and what's happening to Will. So it can feel a bit slow going at first. Um, I think that's partly because you don't have the urgency you had when the first season started with Will disappearing and immediately jumping into investigating it. So we've got the first few episodes where... We're catching up with the characters and they're developing the characters but at the same time we feel a bit kind of like what's he doing investigating some some farmer poisoning the other guy's um you know pumpkin patch you know we want to see more of the upside down we want to see more of eleven and mike we want to see more of the other characters so it can feel a bit slower going at first but once it does get going it's brilliant as before the child actors are fantastic with millie bobby brown somehow switching from this meek and terrified thing to just a, a moment's change in expression to I'm going to go all scanners and blow your head up. The second season also feels like a, a natural development from the first with before the Demogorgon was uh, a kind of animal acting on instinct whereas this season we're shown that there's there's a kind of a, a darker force at work, a, a, an intelligence, a sentience beyond our comprehension that is driving the Demogorgons and what its aims are, we, we can only wonder. As the series progresses, there are some, uh, some interesting groupings among the characters we hadn't seen uh, in the first series. I especially liked uh, Dustin and Steve. Uh, with Steve becoming all big brotherly and uh, and teaching Dustin about girls and how he does his hair and all that kind of stuff. Um, at the same time, we're also introduced introduced to some new characters. Um, the girl Max, who uh, joins the group of kids, um, feels like she we don't know enough about we don't find out enough about her. She seems kind of pushed in there just to cause tension amongst the group. Um, similarly, her um, her stepbrother, um, after Steve has now become kind of like the nice guy and one we're rooting for, the, Max's stepbrother gets introduced as the new, you know, jock jerk type kind of guy. Um, and it, they both feel kind of just kind of like pushed in there and we don't get to know enough about them. We also have uh, Eleven and Hopper in the woods in a cabin um, spending time together and there, there are some great scenes between them. And as Eleven starts to, to break out on her own and goes out to explore, we get the seventh, se seventh episode of the series, which is very kind of out of place. And it's, it's the, the Eleven-centred episode that you know doesn't take place in Hawkins. And we, we meet up the, with the, the punky um, group that, for some reason, were in that clip at the very first start of the series but then we don't see anything from them until episode 7. Anyway, the um, the Eleven Centred episode feels very out of place. It feels a bit like when, um, you know, TV series of kind of like, we're, we're going to do a spin-off series, so we'll try to introduce these characters in the main series, and then we'll do the spin-off series. It, it feels a little bit like that. Um, the se seventh episode wasn't too bad, but um, it does you do get that feeling. On the, on the flip side, though, it feels like a natural progression for Eleven that she needs to, you know, get away from Hawkins, explore her past to realise that she has to come back to Hawkins and it's where she belongs. And despite the slow going 
as the series progresses and we get towards the end it just gets better and better and better and it's fantastic sure the series has a couple of flaws the, these new characters that aren't really well developed and, and feel a bit shoveled in there um, you know the, the seventh episode uh, things like that but on the whole it's still a great series and very much looking forward to season three um, would I say it's better than the first? Probably not, but if you enjoyed the first season, then you're definitely worth watching the second. So, Stranger Things 2, did you enjoy it? And does it stack up against the first series? And what kind of hopes do you have for season 3? Let us know in the comments below. And in the meantime, you've got a subscribe button here and some of our previous videos here. And we will see you next time. Bye.